Welcome yet again to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. This lecture will be the third lecture in our wood design series. This video is going to focus on the topic of knots in woods. This video will be a bit shorter than some of the others in the series, and the topics here will feed into later videos, especially discussions of lumber grading and how imperfections in lumber are handled in the structural wood design process. This video will be more self-contained and will simply cover the topic of tree knots and related features on trees. Let's start by reviewing a bit about how trees grow. As you may recall from the first lecture in this series, trees grow from the inside out. Once a layer of tree has been laid down, it can't simply be removed by the tree later on. A young sapling's branches will grow and thicken, but the trunk of the tree continues to thicken as the tree grows taller and older, as it needs more trunk to hold up the additional weight. But what happens to these old branches that are now embedded within the expanded trunk? They don't simply cease to exist. They remain there embedded within the expanded trunk. One of the best illustrations I've ever seen of this is actually through the work of a skilled artist. Uh, Giuseppe Pinone is an Italian artist. Among his works are carvings that reveal the inner structure of trees. Some of his works involve undoing the, this tree uh, enveloping process. He will take a log and partially carve back the trunk revealing what lies uh, within. What's revealed is effectively a tree within a tree. If you carve back the trunk of an older tree, you can actually quite literally find its younger form embedded within it. This is an example of one of his works, and you can see that what he has quite literally done is take a much older, uh, much more completely well-developed uh, tree trunk and actually carve out the uh, interior of it, revealing the inner structure. And I just think this is the, the I just love this. I just think this is, pers personally, I just think this is amazing. I can't uh, stop gushing enough about this because just trees, it's just amazing. Just like that you can, it, I just found it wonderfully fascinating that even after a tree is decades old, you can go back and carve it open and find the inner, uh, well, they called it, well, he uh, titled this The Hidden Life Within, and I suppose that's quite literally true. There's a few more examples here as well. Uh, all of the same kind of thing, starting with either a tree trunk or a large uh, beam or a, a post of some sort, and then carving out the inner uh, uh, the inner branches, etc. So there will be a link to this down in the uh, description, uh, in the description of this YouTube uh, video. So go ahead and check that out if you want to take a closer look. It's also interesting to note that this kind of enveloping that can be seen in um, uh, interior tree branches and things, that kind of enveloping can even happen with uh, foreign objects placed near trees, things like uh, metal signs, things like even posts, and even sometimes things like bicycles. Uh, for example, if you nail a metal sign to a young tree, often eventually the tree may actually grow around it, uh, covering it up, growing over it, and in some cases completely enveloping it. In fact, I discovered this unique subreddit. It's called, it's, it has this uh, wonderfully curious title, uh, Trees Sucking on Things that illustrates this well. I just uh, personally love this uh, concept, this subreddit, just an entire uh, subreddit uh, dedicated to the topic of a, uh, well, trees uh, surrounding and enveloping objects. So um, there's different examples. This looks like there's a few uh, boards or some sort of platform on this one, maybe an old tree house that some kids built or something. Oh, let's see, a cherry tree that somebody tried to cut down with a uh, chainsaw and the, the cherry tree ended up enveloping the chainsaw blade when I guess it broke or some such. Uh, and here's an example of a sign uh, that is actually being uh, absorbed here 
there was a sign that someone hung on the tree, and the tree is actually growing uh, in and around the sign. Well, not in the sign, but actually growing around and fully enveloping the sign. And you can go ahead and check the subreddit out. Again, the link is, or a link to it, is in the description below. Uh, and they'll have different, ex I'm sure when you go and uh, check this out, they'll have different, uh, more interesting examples as well. So here's a fence that uh, the tree, that was near a growing tree, and the tree needed to expand, the fence line was in the way, and this thing just, uh, well, I guess it's a uh, metal gate, not a fence, but yes. Um, there was a, this wire or uh, rod in the way, and the tree just kind of enveloped it as it grew. So, uh, why is this relevant to us when we're studying structural wood design? Why is this anything more than a curiosity, a topic for maybe botanists and artists alone to worry about? Well, imagine back to a tree that has been growing for many years. On the outside, it may look like it have a, has a perfectly solid trunk with a uniform, defect-free grain going all the way through. But as we've seen, uh, especially from, even if you don't have like an envelopment kind of situation, you know, with foreign objects and things, uh, even just from the regular tree branch growth process, you can end up with these embedded branches within the trunk of a tree. So um, again, on the outside, it may look like a perfectly uniform defect-free grain all the way through. However, in, the real in reality, the trunk may be full of these old branches. And again, it's not just old branches that disrupt the tree growth. Uh, it's not just branches that disrupt the tree growth process. Uh, smaller defects exist from small uh, growth buds that never really grow much. And in fact, sometimes a tree branch will actually die or be pulled out by some animal or some storm or forest or whatever. And you can end up with a cavity uh, where the tree branch used to be. So sometimes the tree may then some be, it, it may be able to go back and refill that space, but sometimes it doesn't and a, and a cavity just remains where formerly a tree branch was. Now, imagine for a moment how we actually physically harvest a tree. How do we go from a living um, tree, a you know, standing tree, to something you could go buy at the hardware store, you could go buy at a big box store or whatever? How do we go from a tree to lumber? Well, obviously we start by felling the tree, we cut it down. Then we strip off the bark, the branches, and the leaves. And uh, maybe in some rare cases you'd save some larger branches, but typically you use just the trunk. So at the end, we're left with just this bare tree trunk after we've removed the branches, the bark, etc. Then what we do is we cut the trunk into boards running along the trunk of the tree, along the length of the trunk of the tree, uh, gen uh, generally parallel to the direction of the grain. As we saw in lecture two, the, the uh, grain direction isn't always perfectly uh, along the uh, tree's um, along the tree's uh, trunk, but uh, generally the tree. Uh, generally the grain will run along the length of the trunk and we cut our boards in that direction. So think back to those old embedded branches. Those old embedded branches are not parallel to the main grain of the tree. Rather, they are perpendicular to the grain. And even worse, they don't have great contact with the surrounding trunk material. Thus, when the trunk is cut, they often fall out completely. And even if they remain present, they are only loosely bonded to their surrounding material at best and contribute very little to the mechanical strength of a cut board. So imagine cutting a tree trunk, but all those old interior branches fall out. What do you end up with? Well, unsurprisingly, you end up with a board with a hole in it. And this is fundamentally what we refer to as a knot. Sometimes the section of a tree branch remains uh, em embedded, sometimes it falls out, but always it decreases the strength of the board around it. So even if the uh, even if that section of the tree branch remains there, the rest of the grain of the uh, trunk around it has to bend and flow around it, as you can see in some of these uh, pictures. So again, uh, here are some examples of um, some uh, knots and trees, and you can clearly see the grain pattern flowing in and around the uh, knot in the wood. And this ultimately is where knots and boards come from. A tree grows branches and the trunk eventually grows around those branches as it grows. When the tree is eventually cut down and turned into lumber, the holes left by these branches become knots in the final lumber products. Burls are another kind of tree growth related phenomenon. Uh, if you're not familiar, burls are irregular conglomerations of wood located somewhere on the tree. 
They can be located almost anywhere on a tree. It's very common to see them uh, near the uh, bottom, near the base of a tree where the trunk meets the roots, but they can occur, but they can occur anywhere. In burls, the grain grows in random, jumbled directions. So, burls can form in several ways, but the most common is from some sort of injury to the tree. Maybe a part of the bark is damaged or removed, maybe insects or disease destroy a part of the tree's surface material. In many ways, burls can be thought of as a tree's version of scar tissue. Trees, like any other organism, are subject to bacterial and viral infection. And just as your skin protects you from many infections, the bark of a tree protects it as well. Thus, when a section of bark is damaged or removed, the tree tries to close the wound as soon as possible. The goal in this growth is not to create an optimal piece of wood with perfectly aligned, uh, perfectly strong, optimized grain structure uh, to make the tree literally good as new. No, that type of growth takes years. Ordinary growth rings have to, be, have to form one year at a time, bit by bit, layer by layer. When uh, a tree is facing a surface, major surface uh, defect or major surface injury, a tree can't afford to wait decades for its outer surface to be resealed. It needs to seal itself up again as rapidly as possible. Again, every second that its, uh, that it, it, that its inner surface is exposed, that, that, that it's not covered in bark, it risks, it is at constant risk of infection. So, again, it needs to seal itself as rapidly as possible. As such, its cells go into overdrive, growing as fast as possible in, in really any direction possible. So you can think of this as an analogous process with human scar tissue. So think of how uh, human scar tissue works. Skin normally has many intricate features. For example, um, let's see. So think about uh, as regular skin. For example, regular skin is woven with an intricate network of many features such as sweat glands and hair follicles. Uh, scar tissue doesn't have this. In fact, scar tissue do scars don't even tan. The reason for this is that scar tissue cells don't produce melanin. Scar tissues are not optimized to be the perfect, ideal type of skin. Again, they don't have sweat glands, they don't have hair follicles, they don't have melanin production. They're optimized for one thing and one thing only, and that is rapid growth. An open wound is an open door to infection, and the body tries to close it as soon as possible. The body closes the wound with the easiest, most basic version of the skin it can manage, and thus scar tissue is formed. Burls are similar. Uh, wood tissue slapped together to a rapidly close a wound by a tree. That's all burls fundamentally are. And as you can see in some of these images here, you can see that uh, uh, tree burls, they're just, uh, they just form in uh, random grumble, uh, jumbled grain directions. And that's just from the process of trying to close a wound or injury as rapidly as possible. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in today's video. This is just a short discussion of two particular types of wood defects, knots and burls. The next video will also be similarly short, focusing briefly on uh, discussing certain lumber defects that arise from the way milled lumber dries and seasons. If you would like to help make content like this possible, see the link to our Patreon page in the description of this video. Regardless, I hope to see you all soon in the next lecture. I hope to see you then, and as always, thank you.